Reuven 65a. Rav Sheshit said in the name of Rabbi Eliezer ben Azira, I can make an argument that exempts the entire world from judgment from the day that the temple was destroyed until now. As it is stated, therefore hear now this, you afflicted and drunk, drunken, but not from wine. Isaiah fifty one twenty one, which teaches that in the wake of the destruction of the temple, all Jews are considered intoxicated and are not responsible for any sins they commit. The Gemara raises an objection to this argument from the following Bereta. With regard to one who is intoxicated, his acquisition is a binding acquisition. That is, he cannot retract the transaction when he is sober, and similarly, his sale is a binding sale. Moreover, if he committed a transgression, for which he is liable to receive the death penalty, he is executed. And if the offense is punishable by lashes, he is flogged. The principle is that he is like a sober person in all matters, except that he is exempt from prayer. Therefore, even if the people of Israel are considered drunk, they are nonetheless responsible for their actions. The Gemra answers that even Rabbi Eliezer ben Azira did not mean that they should be exempt from liability for all their sins. Rather, what is the meaning of his statement, I can exempt? He, too, meant that he could exempt them from the judgment of prayer, i.e., Jews cannot be held liable for praying without the proper intentions. Rabbi Hanina said, They taught that an intoxicated person is responsible for all his actions only in a case where he did not reach the state of intoxication of Lot. However, if he reached the state of intoxication of Lot, so that he is altogether unaware of his actions, he is exempt from all liability. Rabbi Hanina said, Whoever passes a shield over himself at a time of arrogance, i.e., whoever suppresses his evil inclination as though it were covered with a shield when he is arrogant, e.g., when he is intoxicated or the like, Rabenu Hananel, troubles will be closed and sealed from him. As it is stated, the channels of Afike, his scales are his pride, closed together as with a tight, czar, seal. Job 41, 7. The verse is interpreted homiletically. When at a time of arrogance a person passes a shield, mapic, over his evil inclination, his troubles, Zarot, will be closed and sealed before him. The Gemara poses a question. From where may it be inferred that the meaning of this word, afik, is a formulation denoting passing, aburai? The Gemara answers, as it is written, My brothers have dealt deceitfully like a wadi, like the channel, a thick, of brooks that pass by, ya avoru. Job 6.15 This implies that the term a thick is synonymous with the verb ya avoru, which refers to something that travels and passes by. Rabbi Yohanan said, this is not the correct interpretation. Rather, it was stated that whoever does not cover, but draws out, mapic, a shield at a time of arrogance, troubles will be closed and sealed from him. 
In other words, a person must draw his weapons and shield in order to fight his evil inclination when it tries to overpower him. Rabenu Hanano, the Gemara poses a question. From where may it be inferred that this word mapik is a formulation denoting revealing? The Gemara answers, as it is written, the channels of Afiki waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were laid bare. Psalms 18.16 The Gemra asks, Now, since the verses may be interpreted both in accordance with the opinion of this master and in accordance with the opinion of the other master, what is the practical difference between them? The Gemra answers, The practical difference between them is with with regard to the following practice of Rav Sheshit, as Rav Sheshit gave the responsibility for monitoring his sleep to his attendant, instructing the attendant to wake him when the time for prayer arrived. One sage, Rabbi Hanina, is of the opinion that the practice of Rav Sheshit is correct as Rabbi Hanina maintains that if one is in great need of sleep, it is better to nap for a while and then wake up with renewed vigor. And one sage, Rabbi Yohanan, is not of the opinion that the practice of Rav Sheshit is correct. He holds that a person must marshal his strength and pray, rather than succumb to the need for sleep. Rav Haya Bar Ashi said that Rav said, Anyone whose mind is unsettled should not pray. As it is stated, when distressed, one should not issue decisions. The Gemara relates that Rabbi Hanina, on a day that he was angry, would not pray. As he said that it is written, When distressed, one should not issue decisions. The Gemara similarly relates that Mar Ukva, on a day of a south wind, would not venture out to the court, for this hot and harsh wind would disturb his usual clarity of mind. Rav Naaman Bar Yitzhak said, The study of Halakha requires clarity, as on a day when a north wind blows and clears the skies. Abe said similarly that if my stepmother says to me, Bring me a dish of kuta, I can no longer study Torah in my usual fashion, as even a simple task such as this troubles me and distracts me from my Torah study. Similarly, Rava said, If I am bitten by a louse, I can no longer learn in my usual manner. The Gemma relates that the mother of Mar, son of Ravina, would prepare seven garments, garments for him for the seven days of the week, so that he would not be bitten by the lice found in old clothes. Rabbeinu Hananil. Rav Yehuda said, Night was created only for sleep. Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish said, The moon was created only for Torah study by its light. When people said to Rabbi Zierra, Your teachings are exceedingly sharp, he said to them, They were formulated during the daytime hours. This teaches that Torah study during the day is most beneficial to clarity of the mind. Rav Hizda's daughter said to her father, Rav Hizda, who would spend his nights in study. Doesn't the master wish to sleep a little? He said to her, Days that are long in quantity, but short in the opportunity to study Torah and perform mitzvot will soon arrive, and we will sleep a lot. After I die, there will be more than enough time for sleep. Rav Naaman Bar Yitzhak said, We, Torah scholars, are day workers, as our study is performed primarily during the day. 
The Gemara relates that Rava Ha Bar Yaakov would borrow and repay, i.e., if for some reason he neglected to study during the day, he would use the night hours to compensate for the missed time. Rabbi Eliezer said, One who returns home from a journey should not pray for three days while recovering from the hardship of being on the road. As it is stated, And I gathered them together at the river that runs to Aheva, and we encamped there for three days, and I inspected the people. Ezra 8.15 After which it is stated, Then I proclaimed a fast there, at the river of Aheva, that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of him a safe journey for us. Ezra 8.21, which teaches that they rested three days before praying. The Gemra relates that Shmuel's father, when he would return home from his journey, would not pray for three days, as he would have to rest from his journey. Shmuel himself would not pray in a house that contained an alcoholic beverage, as the scent of the alcohol would disturb his concentration during prayer. Similarly, Rab Papa would not pray in a house that contained small fried fish, due to their smell. Rabbi Hanina said, Whoever is appeased by his wine, i.e., whoever becomes more relaxed after drinking, has in him an element of the mindset of his Creator, who acted in a similar fashion. As it is stated, And the Lord smelled the sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. Genesis 8.21 As it were, God acted more favorably toward his creatures after he was appeased with the smell of the burnt offerings. Smell can be as potent as drinking or eating itself. Rabbi Haya said, Anyone who remains settled of mind after drinking wine and does not become intoxicated has an element of the mindset of 70 elders. The illusion is wine, yayin spelled yad, yad, nun, was given in 70 letters, as the numerological value of the letters comprising the word is 70, as yad equals 10 and nun equals 50. Similarly, the word secret Sad, spelled Samik, Vav, Dalit, was given in 70 letters, as Samik equals 60, Vav equals 6, and Dalit equals 4. Typically, when wine entered the body, a secret emerged. Whoever does not reveal secrets when he drinks is clearly blessed with a firm mind like that of seventy elders. Rabbi Hanan said, Wine was created only in order to comfort mourners in their distress and to reward the wicked in this world so they will have no reward left in the world to come. As it is stated, Give strong drink to him that is ready to perish and wine to the bitter of soul. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Proverbs 31, 6 Him that is ready to perish refers to the wicked, who will perish from the world, while the bitter of soul denotes mourners. Rabbi Hanan bar Papa said, Anyone in whose house wine does not flow like water is not yet included in the Torah's blessing. As it is stated, And he shall bless your bread and your water. Exodus 23.25 The water mentioned in this verse actually refers to wine, as learned in the following manner. 
just as bread is something that may be purchased with second tithe money, i.e. one is permitted to buy bread with money used to redeem second tithe. So too the word water in the verse is referring to a liquid that may be purchased with second tithe money. And what is that? It is wine, as one may buy wine with second tithe money, but one may not buy water. And nevertheless, the verse calls it water.